Ever wonder who makes the technology behind a phone screen? Or are the pixels on any other modern high definition display? What about your microprocessor? These are all devices that are created from things called transistors and developed inside what we call a clean room. In fact, the University of Michigan has one of the most state-of-the-art clean rooms in the country, and we are able to develop any one of these devices right here on campus. Today, almost all modern electronics have transistors inside of them. My name is Brad Frost, and I currently study electrical engineering here at U of M. While participating in the SURE program this summer, I worked with Dr. Becky Peterson and Mr. Wen Ming Hu optimizing transparent thin film transistors. Now, let's talk about what exactly that is. A thin film transistor is the combination of thin films that are necessary to create a functioning transistor. Where a thin film transistor differs is that it is fabricated on a non-conducting substrate, such as glass. Typically, transistors are built on a semiconducting material as the substrate, like silicon. Therefore, all of the layers of a thin film transistor must be deposited individually. The reason we are working on thin film transistors is because they have many emerging applications. Decreasing transistor size means that we can fit more in the same space. It's like a continuation of Moore's Law. He said that every two years the number of transistors on an integrated circuit would double. We just want to make transistors smaller, but we also want to make them transparent and flexible. That's why we are making thin film transistors, because they will eventually be placed on transparent substrates such as glass. A very important application of this is for high definition LCD displays. Each thin film transistor helps power a single pixel in an LCD. Therefore, decreasing transistor size will allow us to fit more pixels in the same area of a TV and thus have a higher resolution display. Now, how exactly does a transistor work? Put simply, all a transistor does is amplify and switch electric signals. A transistor is either on or off. This is how our data is stored today, with zeros and ones. What's also incredible about transistors is how fast it is able to do these processes and without even moving at all. Today, transistors are so small that a common dust mite floating in your house is 10 times a transistor's size. So let's talk about what it is made of. We begin with the bottom conducting layer, known as the gate of the transistor. This is then followed by an insulating oxide material called the dielectric layer. Next is the most important part of the transistor, the semiconducting layer. The semiconducting layer is what makes all of the magic of a transistor possible. Finally, we deposit two more conducting parts known as the source and the drain. When an electrical current is applied to the source electrode, electrons from the current attempt to flow from the source metal through the semiconducting layer into the drain. At this point, there is no current being conducted across the scap between the source and drain contacts. This is known as the off state of the transistor. However, there is a third conducting layer mentioned previously, the gate. This layer is insulated from the rest of the transistor by the dielectric oxide layer, which prevents any current from flowing across. What the oxide allows us to do, however, is create a type of capacitor known as a MOS capacitor, or metal oxide semiconductor capacitor. What this capacitor does is create a conducting channel of charges in the semiconducting layer when a positive voltage is applied to it. Hence, we have created a channel of current from the source to the drain and the transistor has now been turned on. With this device, we can form logical circuits and ways to store all of the data in our modern world. To make these devices, I spent a lot of time developing fabrication techniques to create sections of transistors in the clean room. I learned many different processes such as photolithography, a method for patterning transistors, and other material deposition processes. My specific job was creating a separate gate pad for the transistor. This is important because without having a separate gate, you can't combine transistors to form circuits. First, I would deposit the gate metal down. Then, I powder the metal in a sulfur fluoride and oxygen plasma after depositing a light sensitive material known as a photoresist. The photoresist acts as a shield for all parts of the metal that I do not want touch. To create very small features of the transistors, I selectively expose the photoresist using a tool called a mask, which exposes the photoresist in the areas not covered by the mask. Development of the exposed areas then removes the photoresist in just those places. After this, I deposited my insulating oxide layer, which helps to form the small capacitor to build charge in the semiconducting layer when turned on. This layer is transparent and is patterned using a base chemical. Finally, we complete the transistor by depositing the channel layer, the semiconductor, and the source strain metal contacts. With the processes I helped to characterize, we now have functioning transistors that will be advancing TFT applications to LCD displays.